Well, we've had uh, some discussion on this on the platform previously. We had a good chat with Melissa Lee about this a few weeks back. The merger, the merger of Red Radio, Radio New Zealand, and FBoy Island Promoters TVNZ. TVNZ, which also runs, it seems to me, oh, mind you, TV3 do to the taxpayer-funded woke documentaries on Web of Chaos. And, oh, no, Fire and Fury wasn't on TV. It wasn't good enough to be broadcast. Um, but it is a huge merger. A huge merger costing tens of millions of dollars. It's being overseen by a former... Well, the ideas were, were, were brought up by a committee headed by a former relatively obscure New Zealand First MP who obviously used some sort of leverage of political knowledge to get the job. Um, and it is going ahead under this government um, and will be implemented. A question many have asked, and I am still asking, is why do we merge TVNZ and RNZ? What is the problem we are trying to solve? And what might the new public service... Well, it's not a broadcaster anymore, the war, which media organisation. What will be its objectives and, if you like, its, its principles? Joining us to discuss... Uh, this quite massive policy change for the New Zealand media is Peter Thompson. He uh, lectures in media studies at Victoria University. Uh, Professor Thompson, Peter, is that all right? Can I call you Peter? Yeah, uh, oh, just Peter's fine. That's great. Good no, morning, Sean. Good morning. Peter, this is the biggest shake-up, really, in public media, well, in our, I think in my, no, yeah, my lifetime, probably, in my lifetime. Is it clear to you what this policy is, what the problem is that this policy wants to fix? I, I think there's two, two issues here. Uh, the first one that most of the public debate has been focused on uh, is this idea that we need some kind of public, uh, public service media platform that will serve us in the 21st century and, and, and will actually address the needs of diverse audiences you know, in the digital media environment. So it's going well beyond the traditional or so-called legacy media that we see in television and radio and expanding into you know, multiple other platforms. Mm. So that's, that's the ostensible merit of it. Mm. But I think there's another issue. And, and the other issue is that, that the government doesn't know what to do with TVNZ. Um, it, it, it's a publicly owned broadcaster. Mm -hmm. um, it it it's currently doesn't have a public service charter. It did between 2003 and 2011. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, it sits there basically operating as a commercial broadcaster. But we know that the, 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 the models, the business models that underpin uh, TVNZ and other, other you know, traditional broadcasters are, are slowly declining. So the question is, why is the government going to keep it? it it's probably gone beyond the point where it could sell it and make any, any significant money. Um, if, it's, if it starts subsidising it, then, of course, all the other commercial broadcasters will cry foul. And yet it's still a channel, it's still a platform that, that can generate, you know, 500,000, 700,000 viewers you know, but, in the but, but and at no its core, the government is not in the TV business, and there's no business being in the TV business simply for commercial gain, does it? Well, I think I think if it's only there for commercial gain, there's, there's a question mark about about you know why would the government want to invest? I mean, there are other state-owned enterprises that that operate on a commercial basis. I mean, Kiwi Bank is one. I mean, the, the, there's others like Cordia that deal with Spectrum. I mean, the, the, there are pretexts for government, you know, being involved in commercial enterprises in some in some instances. Mm. But in the case of television, of course, there are other commercial competitors. Um, and, and so the, the the issue, I think, for the government is that they want to make sure that, that this this platform is able to deliver something of public value into the future. Yeah. Now, whether the merger is exactly the right way to go about doing that, uh, I think we can debate, and I'm sure we will. Mm. Um. Well, let's look at RNZ as well then. Mm. Um, and RNZ has got online platforms. In fact, it's run a few awards, I think, for some of its websites and podcasts and things. Isn't it actually adapting to the new multimedia online environment as it is? I, I, I think it, it is doing. Of course, there was a plan under... Uh, 
uh, uh, under the, the first uh, Jacinda Ardern government, you know, with, with Claire Curran as Minister of Broadcasting, to redevelop uh, Radio New Zealand into a, a multimedia, you know, public service platform. Yeah, and then she you had know, a coffee uh, with uh, Carol Hirschfeld, didn't she? And that was all over. Well, yeah, I think that the wheels seemed to fall off that. But it was very interesting that as soon as Chris Farfoy took over, um, he, he abandoned Karen's plans to redevelop RNZ as RNZ Plus with a television option yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and really took a much broader vision uh, to try and encapsulate TVNZ and RNZ. Yeah. And, of course, they're very different beasts. Mm. But I think, I, think, I think RNZ has been trying very hard to expand its, uh, its presence on, an, on a number of platforms, first of all by its own online services. Mm. Uh, some of them have been more successful than others. The wireless that was aimed at youth yeah. didn't, go, didn't go down too well, and that's, that's now been discontinued. Uh, but something it has been doing very effectively in some respects is, is its uh, radical sharing. You know, that it's making, making content available to, to other media. To, to support their their news efforts. So I think, well, I think that's no, possibly no, I, a, I'd a, say it's proper. Model. It's spreading its propaganda, unfortunately. Because my question would actually be to you: Why do we need any state media? Well, I think fundamentally, the 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 if, I mean, the, you say state media. I think there's yep. a difference between state media and public service media. Is there? Um, pu yeah, I, I, absolutely. What's uh, the state difference? media run? Well, the state media are run by the state for the state and, yep. and possibly, therefore, accountable to the government of the day in some mm, direct yeah. way. Yeah, so that Public describes service. RNZ. Well, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does, uh, actually. Paul, if you've I, ever worked there, it does. Well, um, well you, 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 you might say that. No, from, I, can say the, that with, I can say that with, you know, 20 years of experience. It's an observable fact, Paul. Well, and, and to well, say well, anything and I, else well, is, is ridiculous. Well, there's no conversation to be had then. You're simply saying, well, I'm right because I'm right and there's no debate. No, 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 I'm have. just saying you couldn't look at RNZ and say it's politically neutral. I, d I don't think you could look at, uh, at the platform and say it was politically because neutral. Because it's not and I don't have to be and I'm not pretending to be. I'm saying we come oh. with an attitude and it's obvious a and you can choose whether or not, and I'm not asking you for taxpayers' money to support the, ad the editorial True. attitude we have, right? True. But for RNZ but, to suggest that it's politically neutral is laughable. Oh, I don't think anything's absolutely neutral. Yeah. But I think the point is there are degrees of independence, uh, uh, and, and that's really the issue here, and that's part, been part of yeah. the debate. But public service media in principle should yeah. be independent of the government of the day. Yeah. And, and the reason that they're publicly funded, and this was your question, yeah. is, is that if you... If, if, you, if you simply leave the provision of media services to, to our individual con choices as consumers, mm. then, then the aggregate outcome of that will probably be suboptimum in what we Why? value as, as a society. Why? Well, we let, very, the market, we let the market determine a whole lot of other outcomes. Well, we do let the market determine a whole lot of other outcomes, such as you know, which brand of baked beans it becomes dominant. Yeah. Yeah. However... What, what we know, and there's research to back this up, is, is that if you ask people what they, uh, what they like to, to consume as individuals in terms of media diet, of course they'll say, well, we want the rugby and we want Game of Thrones and you know, we want to binge watch all of that. And, and then if you ask them in a slightly different frame, what, what sorts of media do you value? They say, well, you know, we need educational content, we need, you know, s s robust news and current affairs, we want educational documentaries, we want good kids programs. And an awful lot of that isn't going to be available, particularly in a small economy like New Zealand with a limited economy of scale, unless you actually subsidise it. Right. Um, so, so, and the simple example, I mean, a great example of that would be New Zealand drama. Um, I mean, you can if you you want to make a, a, a good quality drama, it's going to cost something like 750, maybe even up yeah. to a million dollars an hour these days. Now, if you want to do Game of Thrones, you're talking 10 million to 50 yeah, million. Yeah, but you don't need to do Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones is already there, and the commercial boys can can buy it, right? Well, well it is. But there's an argument that that New Zealanders want want to see themselves and their own cultures and their own lives reflected in the media. Um, and, and there's a very strong demand for that. But if you leave well, it to well, a commercial... I, 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 is there? Can you 
Give me an example. Well, yes, there there is. Some of these programs are incredibly popular, and if you, and audience surveys reveal that, that there actually is a strong demand. Now, mm. whether you personally or yep. I personally yeah. think that they're they're particularly valuable, it, it, it isn't really the point. Because if you well, leave if you leave this solely to the vicissitudes of the market, that, then it will undersupply something that, that a lot of people consider very valuable and cannot on their own, you know, e even, even if they are directly interested, you know, they, they yeah. won't be able to afford to fund it. Yeah. So I think, I think there's a very strong case for, for subsidising the media to, to provide the kinds of broadcasting content and the kinds mm. of genres that, that the market isn't so really very good at So why do we need to do that through these umbrella or a single now merged umbrella organisation? Why don't we well, just do use New Zealand on Air Film Commission to make these pieces of cultural content and then provide them to the existing commercial broadcasters or media organisations? Yeah, I, I, I think to some extent you can, but you run into, a, run into a bottleneck problem. And the bottleneck problem is this, that, that if, if, you're, if you have a good idea for a programme, say you've got a, I don't know, an educational documentary idea about you know, something mm. to do with New Zealand and you think, well, that, that, this, will be, this will be a really interesting bit of, bit of television, the, the first thing that New Zealand Air will say is, right, you, you've got to go out and find someone that was willing to distribute that yeah. and you have to demonstrate that, that you're going to hit a decent audience. Yeah. Now, depending on the level of funding that you're asking for, if it's something you know, relatively inexpensive, yeah. they, then possibly they'll allow it to go online. But even then, you need to find a platform because New Zealand Air is not vertically integrated in the sense that mm. it funds the content, but yeah. it doesn't itself provide the distribution. And yeah. so the, the, the issue there is that you run into a commercial gatekeeping And unfortunately, issue. it you, also, you, you know... I mean, it makes a lot of woke rubbish, doesn't it? It makes um, some really well, good stuff, it, but it does make some woke <laughs> rubbish too. Again, and and uh, I don't think you can you could point to any any sort of television provider where you would say that yeah. everything it produces is yeah. is one. See, I'd be worried I think, I think, if we had a public broadcaster that was making F Boy Island. I mean, that's got to be a low point. Oh, oh boy! Uh, <laughs> now we agree on that. Um, and I think that's one of one of the problems that I, I would highlight with this the, the current uh, you know the current bill for this new public media entity. I don't think it's specific enough about where the public funding is going to be spent. Um, I certainly think it would be a, a travesty if it if it went into you know sort of reality TV low brow content like F Boy Island. Now and, and and as it stands, it's not publicly funded. You know the. the for, for good or for ill, the, there seems to be enough market demand for that to, to, to subsidise that through commercial revenues. Um, but I certainly think there's a range of genres that, that you won't get if you leave it to the market. And, and there's a good example of this. If, if, you, go, if, if you remember TVNZ 6 and 7, um, they're only small platforms. They're very cheap, but they were commercial free. And they provided a, a range of content that none of the other commercial broadcasters was able to contemplate because no I mean, one wanted to watch. Well, well, no one wanted to watch it. Well, n well, no, that's not quite true. I mean, for the for the money that was spent on them, they were actually pulling in a reasonable audience. Um, but there was a range of programs there dealing with culture and politics. There was a pr there was a program about the law courts. There was a program on on literature. Um, there were two programs survived the discontinuation of the funding. National, National said, you don't need public broadcasters, you just need public broadcasting, and we've got news all on air for that, and anything on TVNZ 6 and 7, you know, will get funded through, through that. Well, it didn't. The, there was backbenchers that survived a couple of seasons, and then there was Media 7 that became Media 3 and then Media Take on Mari TV, and then that got discontinued as well. So there's a, a wide range they of... They were pretty... Rub I mean, I've got to say, Media 7 was pretty rubbish, though. Oh, I quite well. You know, I, I quite liked it, but but, but I think, Russell I think Brown had said it as a well-known sort of rabid lefty. Well, there's there's uh, there's others who are, who are quite rabid writers in the media, so you can yeah, but they're not getting but like they're not getting that. public funding, Paul. Well, well the point, Peter, the point, sorry, the Peter, point they're not is, getting they're not getting publicly funded. That's the problem I have with this is that that well, the editorial independence is always kind of questionable, and if we look I, at the trend certainly through public broadcasting, and has been towards left-wing perspectives. 
Well, I, th I think that's true in some cases, and I think it's not true in others. I mean, if you look at the way that the economy is reported, it, it, it veers very much to centre-right. You know, economic orthodoxy in the news is very, very rarely challenged. Not a bad point. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I, think, I, think we've, I think we've seen cultural orthodoxy mm. challenged more by public media, yeah. and I think that's possibly why there's a reaction from the right against the so-called wokeness of, of some commentators. Mm. Um, but, but for me, if you, if you take a big step back... I mean, I, I, I think I think you're still you're still in a situation where a lot of the media have a, have a relatively conservative skew on economic issues, even if they have a bit of a liberal skew on on cultural yeah. issues. Yeah. But the but the th but the point I'm trying to make here, Sean, is that there isn't now a program that looks at the media on the media, apart from Media Watch on on RNZ. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing on television. That those programs have disappeared. Yeah. And they disappeared because. They didn't have a distribution platform that was able to offer, to, to absorb the opportunity costs. Mm. You know, so you take you take your program along to to TVNZ or to to yeah. you know Discovery or to Prime, mm. and they'll they'll say, oh look, great idea, but yeah. you know what, we can't schedule. But that. even that, that, that is that, a very that's traditional. Uh, that's a very traditional way of thinking of what what the media is, Peter. I critique the media every day on my show. I just don't well, wrap it look, up in the in the traditional. Oh, I'm going to call this media watch and and have someone with glasses looking serious, with a slightly English accent. Well, uh, I'm talking. So, like this morning, we started by by looking at a story and the coverage of a story from the Midwives Association. Uh, so, okay. I, 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 what I'm saying is that I think even the way we think about broadcasting and programs is pretty well stuck in the past. But I want to come back to one fundamental point, and it's been a really interesting mm. conversation. It's got me thinking, Peter. I guess, to my mind, and I want to know if you agree with me, the problem with this whole merger, and it's going to cost us, what, how many hundreds of millions of dollars, $700 million or something? Um, it doesn't have, if you like, we don't have the big, hairy, ambitious goal laid out for us, what it is meant to create, what its principles are going to be. Um and if we don't know where we're going, how on earth are we going to get there? Well, I, think I, I, I would agree to, a, to an extent that the, the current bill needs further development. It does have a public service charter, um, and I think that's useful in, as, a, as a kind of a compass to, to give the overall direction. What I'd like to see, and, and I, I share some of your concerns about the, the public spend, is that we want to make sure that that money goes into providing public service outcomes and particularly the range of programs that you're not going to get on 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 the commercial operators i mean i think they'll still do some you know mainstream genres i think that's entirely appropriate for a yeah. public media platform but what i wouldn't what i wouldn't be happy with if i was a commercial uh, competitor is is for that money to be put into programs mm. that 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 TVNZ or whatever the new channels will be called uh, uses then to to compete to optimise mm. its ratings and its commercial revenues because I think they would legitimately say well wait a minute that's that's a bung to a to a government competitor but if they're doing the the the, the sorts of programs that are unlikely to be attractive to the commercial sector then i think that's an entirely legitimate use and you can argue whether you you think that programs on poetry are useful i certainly think that uh, programs on literature and the court well you can and, pay and, and for and them politics then. and the media you, you can pay for them then i mean it's not well, like we have a ministry of food that goes to the well, supermarket well, no, for us and, and i'd also argue that the existence of public service media in this day and age because at the moment we are taking money out of the commercial market through tv and c which is a very dominant and big player in this space actually actually discourages competition because other players in media space aren't coming into the new zealand market because it's so warped by the government's involvement uh, well, well, I, I, I don't, I don't really agree with that, Sean. A, a, a because you're supposing that that somehow the commercial sector has a uh, has a default right to the audience, which it doesn't. Uh, 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 but, but the, the the point I come back to, and I like the food analogy. Let, let's 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 keep with that. This this is precisely the 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 point about market failure. If you if you ask people. What, what's a healthy diet? They'll go, oh, well, you know, I suppose you should eat your greens and your beans and your, you know, your yeah. organic broccoli and what, and what's it. And then say, what do you actually eat? Oh, you know, KFC and Macca's. Yeah, yeah. 
And I think we're, we're very much like that with the media. We, we kind of... But, see, we know but, that but we what want, you're want... advocating is that you would have the government monitoring what people eat and only making certain feeds available to them, which would be well, crazy. Well, 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 no, but I think if they subsidise broccoli, it might not be a terrible thing for our diets. Wow. <laughs> Wow, okay, you see, because a lot of people would say that's a very, very socialist, communist thing to say. Oh, well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, use, I'm using that as a reducto ad absurdum, but... but, but yeah. it's, it's well, 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 I don't though. know, I don't think but it is reducto ad absurdum. No, it, it, I think it's exactly the problem we've got with public uh, broadcasting or media in New Zealand. There is no way it well, can't the, well, be bent and it can't be seen in that light. Well, no. Uh, it, it, the point is, do, would you get rid of primary schools? If you left primary schools to the market, pe there would be kids going without an education. What, what about roads or street lighting? I mean, you, you're going you're to pull all yeah. the... I mean, if you want to be all a right. radical libertarian and say that there's no... Get rid of taxes and it, we pay, all pay for ourselves, apart from the fact that society would collapse. Um, you know, the, 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 there'd be all kinds of, of hideous gaps in, in the services that we, we rely on. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so uh, for, for, now you can argue the extent, but I don't think you can argue against the principle that, that the public, public media do provide things that the commercial market doesn't provide and that some of those things, and we can debate mm. which, which things... Okay. Well, uh, give me are, two are examples of things that, that, that public, public broadcasting subsidy. provide that, or public media provide that, that the private sector doesn't. Give me two examples. Well, well, we gave you a few examples with the uh, with, with TVNZ Seven, where it was able to do programs on politics, and it was able to People, do programs on private media. private sector does programs on politics all the time. Well, it didn't do it like backbenches. Some people well, made yes, their they careers on, on backbenches. Yeah, you know, where, where's where's the television? Come on, I mean, backbenches you you was a cheap live, live, you know, very throwdown production. Sorry, if you're going to quote oh, that it, as a piece of quality broadcasting that no one else would ever do, it's just not true. Well, well, no, well nobody else has done it, um, so that's a fact. Plenty, um, we talk about thing, politics other, a little bit on this show too, I've got to say. Uh, I think TV3 or, or, or Warner Brothers did a poll that has changed the face of New Zealand politics with no public money on Sunday night. Well, well, we, well, we did, better public media did a poll. It was a couple of years ago now, uh, uh, and and the vast majority of the public, you know, sixty-two thirds percent, you know, supported. Sixty-two percent of the people you surveyed. No, that that was this was a an, a, a, um, an independent poll, a poll by Omnibus that did a did a demographically representative survey. Yeah. Um, so you've so, got a so poll that says backbenches, programs like backbenches never get made. No, well, not, well, they do. Not. Not, not well. Some things get made, but let's let's. Okay, let's give me another to, example of a program that wouldn't get made without public media. Educational documentaries, local dramas, uh, educational programs for children, um, the kids zone content that okay. was that was originally on TVNZ six that was very very popular, and after the funding ended under national, went on to Sky behind a paywall for a while. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having a so, kids TV channel. I'd be happy to pay for that. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. But, but not enough people would pay for that to make it viable as a market enterprise. All right. And, geez, that would be tough. It's, well, I, I, I think the point is for a relatively small amount of money. And we're, we've got to look at this, this investment. I mean, it's maybe up to $200 million a year. 40, 40, well, in fact, $80 million of which or so is already committed. So it's an extra $100 million a year, and it sounds an awful lot, and especially to some smaller media outlets that, that think that's a, a huge sum of money. But you've got to put this in the context that it's an investment in democracy. And I take your points about being concerned about independence, and I think there should be measures to ensure that our yeah. public media are politically independent. But you go and look at that. It means um, vote, sport, and recreation, $159 million. Yeah. yeah most yep. of that's going into supporting elite athletes. I mean, well... You could get rid of that and put it into public media. You're saying that's a good idea. What about vote defence? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's five billion. I mean, should, should we yeah. privatise the army? Just just have those that want wars uh, subsidising yeah. wars. Now, <laughs> Peter, I have I mean, found. Where, where, where do you end? Yeah, <laughs> Peter, because well, I'm not actually running any ads at the moment, but we do have to get to our news. I have found this a fascinating conversation. I'd like to well, to, to continue it. 
um, oh, in this forum as this thing rolls out. And I thank you very much yep. indeed for for um, uh, for joining us today. And we've had lots of texts through. Um, some agree with me, some agree with you, some are asking interesting questions. Um, okay. And well, I guess the proof of this respond. pudding is going to be uh, in the listening or the reading, isn't it? Well, I, 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 in in the end, I think we're going to have to see what this new uh, this new bill delivers because the select committee should be reporting back right. before the end of the year. All right, anyway, we'll, we'll get, we'll to get back to you when it comes back. Yeah, good on you, Peter. Excellent. I thank you very much Excellent. indeed for your time. That is uh, Professor Peter Thompson from Victoria University. He's a media studies person. I don't know if Peter's ever worked in the media. I'm just going to say I suspect now. But seem to know his stuff and I think an interesting philosophical discussion and what is the point? of having state-funded, and I'm going to call it state-funded because that's what it is, or taxpayer-backed media in this day and age. Sean, great interview with the Vic Professor, but please let people finish their sentences if you're talking over some of them for more than three seconds. Stop. OK, Susan. Um, he said it himself. Some sectors like schools and streetlights need funding because society depends on it. Controlling our media isn't what public depends on. Only authoritarian governments depend on information control. Well said. It's a debatable point.